Welcome to this edition of Inside NCI. I'm Dr. Rick Manro with NCI's Office of Communications and Education, and joining us today is Dr. Lauren Wood. Dr. Wood is a senior clinical investigator in NCI's Center for Cancer Research, or CCR, and she's head of the clinical trials team in CCR's vaccine branch. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Wood. Thank you for having me. Uh, your research interest is uh, primarily focused on developing immune-based therapies for cancer and for HIV-infected persons. Mm -hmm. uh, please tell us about the work you do. Well, there are a lot of similarities between cancer and HIV infection. Both diseases have a problem with hidden areas of disease that can't be seen, um, that drugs don't totally get rid of. And that's the goal behind what we do in the vaccine branch, is to try and harness the immune system and develop either vaccines or immune-based therapies that will kind of go where no drugs can go and get rid of those residual areas of either virus infection or areas of cancer metastases that we can't see. Have there been recent advances in immune-based therapies and in cancer vaccines that you'd like to tell us about? Absolutely. 2010 was a watershed year for those of us who do um, cancer vaccine research because it involved the approval of the first therapeutic cancer vaccine uh, for prostate cancer called Provenge. Um, therapeutic cancer vaccines differ from the traditional vaccines that most people think about because those vaccines are prophylactic, which means they prevent whatever you're being immunized. They prevent tetanus, diphtheria, polio, that kind of thing. Therapeutic vaccines are targeted to individuals who already have a disease, but the hope is to help their immune systems better control that disease. With uh, your research, obviously clinical trials must be an important part. Um, one of the things that we're constantly being told about uh, clinical trials, not only cancer clinical trials, but others as well, is uh, there's a real challenge uh, to recruiting participants for these trials. Uh, can you tell us what some of the barriers are uh, for enrollment in clinical trials uh, in general, but also among minority populations? I think the first barrier is lack of knowledge and lack of awareness. There's been some historical distrust of clinical trials. The second barrier is there are specific eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. um, and those eligibility criteria are based on the nature of the disease, the nature of the agent that we're studying for underrepresented minorities and also women who oftentimes are underrepresented in clinical trials. Some of the issues are that the disease as it relates to women uh, has not maybe been well studied, but there really has been an effort to ensure that women have access to clinical trials if that disease also affects women. And the same focus has um, happened with underrepresented minorities. It's important that we have appropriate representation that represents the diversity of our nation. Are past abuses and cultural differences significant barriers to minority participation in clinical trials? Um, I think that they definitely can be. And I think at a population level, to some extent, that is true. Cultural barriers can include just language barriers, but there are also other cultural barriers in terms of how healthcare providers are regarded, how health and disease is viewed culturally within a community. One of the things that we do find is, is that when people get informed about what the actual research options are, that many of them are very, very interested in participating in clinical trials. And so the other and final area um, that I think leads to underrepresentation is, is that a lot of minority patients are not necessarily offered clinical trial options by their health care providers. And I think that's something else that we need to work on. What is the significance of National Minority Cancer Awareness Week in terms of uh, um, addressing cancer health disparities among minority populations? It's a very important week to highlight the fact that we know that minority populations, certain minority populations, can be disproportionately affected by different types of cancer. For example, we know that the incidence of breast cancer is significantly higher in African American women, and when they get diagnosed with breast cancer and treated, their response rates do not appear to be as great um, 
as Caucasian women. They're more likely to die um, even if they receive the same treatment. There can be a real variation in the incidence of certain cancers in, in different populations. And one of the goals of Minority Cancer Awareness Week is to highlight those cancers which disproportionately affect minorities so that minorities can be encouraged to access health care screening and specifically cancer screening. Well, uh, can you think of anything specific that can be done to increase uh, awareness of clinical trials and the importance of clinical trials participation? I think it's really important to have the local care providers engaged, and I think developing those kinds of dialogues and partnerships are a way to enhance enrollment. Well, I really want to thank you for joining us today. This has been a real pleasure, and it's been extremely informative. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. For more information about research and training opportunities at NCI, please visit our website at www.cancer.gov. For Inside NCI, this is Dr. Rick Manrow.